And then letter F, and this is primarily for senior pastors and youth pastors, okay? Confront your ego. Confront your ego. Here's, I say youth pastors because you all want to be pastors someday, and that's fine, and you should, and God's training you with those students, and I'm all for that. Confront your ego. Number one, what's more important? What's most important? And you, now this, look, you can't answer this here. And I guarantee you, the people that work with you and for you, they know the answer to this next question. What's most important, creating a great organization or creating a name for yourself? You've got, you got to answer that question. What's most important, creating a great organization or creating a name for yourself? That's a big question. What's most important? Do you want to create a great organization or do you want to create a name for yourself? Now, you know what? You may create a great organization and you end up having a name for yourself. and People know you because of your organization. But that's different than using your organization and using your staff to create a name for yourself. Here's what I wrote in my notes. Don't try to write this down. If you want to create a great organization, you'll have to serve. If you want to create a name for yourself, you'll be content being served. It's that simple. I don't think this is in your notes. If you see your staff, and I just... I don't th- is this in your notes if you see your staff? Okay, listen to this. If you see your staff, this, this, this sounds like a joke, but I, I'm serious. If, if, let's, we gotta, this is a big deal. If you see your staff as a supporting cast for your career, announce that at staff meeting next week. <laughs> Just tell them, you know, I don't know how long I'll be here because this is a small town and I'm a big town guy. But... <laughs> I just want you to know I've gathered you here and pay you minimum wage because I'm hoping that if you'll do your job, it'll f- push me up to the surface and, you know, First Baptist big time will come and hire me away. Just, just tell them that, that you see them as the supporting. Okay, you go, oh, well, I'm gonna, but come on. If that's in your heart, in other words, let me just, can I just get, since we're leaders and let's keep this in the room. If you look at me and go, that's what I want to be one day, you, you have a problem, Okay. If you look at any individual and go, that's what I'm setting my sights on. You have work to do. It will be very difficult for you to ever be a great leader. You may accomplish some great things, but great leaders don't set their sight on personalities that they want to emulate. Great leaders dig into where God put them and said, you know what? I am going to serve the heck out of these people. And I don't care how, I, I, I know you want to clap, but we'll clap in a minute. I, I, just, I appreciate it. I, I, and I would have clapped too, probably. But I, I, <laughs> I, I, I want to create an organization to where when people walk in this organization, they go, oh my gosh, this is unbelievable. You know, where, as I get this question all the time, where do you get your people? Nordstrom? No, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't, like, like you go out and say, okay, we'll take that one, and now, I'll take that one. You don't, you don't get your people, you, you don't, leaders don't get people, you know what they do? They attract people. And you know what, let me tell you, let me tell you, the sharpest, smartest people can sniff out an ego two miles away, and they do not want to be a part of that. In fact, we have incredibly talented people leave the marketplace and come work here because they they already been there and done that and they realize, you know what, I am working 60 hours a week for somebody's ego. Don't want to do that. Now, some people are content to do that and that's fine, but great people aren't. Great people want to be a part of a great organization. And you know what? As church leaders who are part of the body of Christ, I think that's our calling. Because Jesus said, you want to be great? You want to be first? Great, you become the servant of all. You may be at the top of the heap. You may be the president, the vice president. You may be the, you know, the leader of your denomination. You may have all kinds of positional leadership. But the higher you go, the more intentional you get about serving the people who come to work to serve you. And in order to do that, at some point, you got to look in the mirror and ask the question, what am I doing this for? Am I trying to create a name for myself? Or am I trying to create... A great organization. Roman numeral three. Is that where we are in your notes? Letter A. Things are signs that things aren't so, quote, great. Competition between departments. Competition between departments. I'll never forget about nine years ago, and I asked permission to tell this story. Uh, in our, and this is great. In our three-month evaluation, uh, there's a guy on our staff named Jason Hodges. And uh, Jason had been here three months, so we sent him his evaluation. 
of the organization. He was young, young leader, great guy. And in fact, much of what you've seen today, he has had his hands all over that. And so there was a, at the end, there was like, you know, a place for just random questions. And here was Jason's question, I'll never forget. Now, he, at the time, he worked for the family ministry. And his question was, I only have one question. Why aren't we supposed to like the service programming division? <laughs> in other words, Andy, I showed up at work and I realized we're in a feud. But I'm not sure why we're shooting at them, but I just shoot because I work in the family ministry and we were told that you just shoot at the service programming division and they're shooting back at us, but nobody's explained this feud to me. Why aren't we supposed to like the people in the service programming division? Now see, I wouldn't have gotten that information that specific other than this little evaluation. He just wanted to know, if I'm gonna shoot at people, just tell me why, I'm Andy, maybe you can help me with this. <laughs> now I had, sensed some tension between those departments, but now I had some ammunition. So I called Reggie Joyner, who was our family minister at the time, has gone on to do orange and great things, and Reggie and I are great friends, and created so much of what you experienced. And I called in Julie Arnold, she was in charge of service programming division. So I had a family minister in service programming division. I said, I just want to read y'all something, it's kind of neat. <laughs> we have an employee that's been here for three months, and here's what he's picked up on. You guys don't get along. And there's something going on between your departments. I said, now, we're not going to have a discussion. Here's what this is like. This is like I'm driving down the road, and i got two kids in the back seat, and they're fighting. I don't really care what they're fighting about. I just want it to stop. So I'm going to leave the room, and you guys will work this out, because this has got to go away. And they kind of, you're right. And you know what? It went away. It just went away. They figured it out. They're smart. If you, have, if you have conflict between divisions in your church, that means, newsflash, they're not serving one another. And they're not loving one another. They're killing one another. And if you're the leader, it is your responsibility to figure it out. And if you say, well, Martha, she's just cantankerous, fire Martha, okay? <laughs> or sit down with Martha and say, Martha, can you be less cantankerous? And if she gets, well, they, 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 you might have to just say, well, you know, you, here's, you know, I'll pay you for six months, but you got, you know, we can't, we're not, we can't have that. It's infectious, it's like a poison, okay? You, if, there, if there's competition, I, and I don't mean, there, I mean, there can be healthy, you know, stuff, but I mean, if it's just that negative territorial silo, or that's not our responsibility, you got work to do. The people aren't serving one another. And it may be because you created a system that created it, or it may be personalities, or, you know, you gotta figure that out. Letter B, double standards. Double standards. That is, there's the pastor, and then there's everyone else. There's the men, and there's the women. Double standards. Letter C, loyalty lectures. Signs that things aren't so great. If you give a lecture about loyalty, the game is over, you just don't know it, okay? <laughs> Let me just share this and we're gonna close. The greatest value is not loyalty. What is it? There's faith, hope, and, and the greatest of these is that loyalty isn't even in the top three. There's faith, there's hope, and there's love. And if you as a leader are into this, well, you know, you gotta be loyal to the pastor, you don't get it. Peter betrayed Jesus in front of Jesus, and Jesus said, you know what, I'm gonna put you in charge of the whole church. You're the cornerstone. <laughs> you would have fired Peter. You would have had like, you would have told bad stories about Peter. Jesus put him in charge. I mean, the Pope's related to Peter. The one guy, Jesus said, Satan, well, I mean, I mean, you know, in you know, Catholic theology, that's the whole deal, right? And, and, you know, Jesus said to Peter, Peter, you know, you're like Satan, get behind me. And, and oh yeah, you betrayed me in, in front of, a, you know, this teenage girl intimidated you. I think I'll put you in charge. I mean, well, what's that about? I'm just telling you. If you give loyalty lectures, I mean, I, I've talked to, people, to staff so many times who, they came on staff with the church and, you know, the, the thing was, okay, we're gonna hire you, but you know, do you understand that ultimately your first loyalty is to the pastor? I said, you do not wanna work there. There is a man or woman who doesn't understand leadership. If you have to require loyalty, it is already over, you don't know it. You 
win loyalty. You deserve loyalty. You don't require loyalty, okay, in, in, in an organization. Now, that doesn't mean you should, you know, people can go around and gossip and stab you in the back. No, no, I'm, I'm just saying, if that has to be a big conversation piece, and then the last thing in my notes is that whole God's anointed thing, you know, don't, don't you know, don't, betray, what is it, don't, whatever God's anointed, what's the phrase? Yeah, don't touch God's anointed. <laughs> okay, just, in the story, who was that referring to? Who was God's anointed? Saul. So what you're telling me is you're Saul? No, I'm David. No, no, David, no, in the story it's Saul. God's anointed it's Saul. So you want to be Saul, does that make me David? No, I'm David, you're Absalom. And anyway, it's, <laughs> just give me a minute, I'll figure this out, okay? But all I know is this is don't touch God's anointed. That has nothing to do with the pastor of a church. It was about a bad king using the bathroom in a cave. That's what this story is about, right? So I know I'm kind of hitting hard on that. All I'm saying is this, pastor, I'm just trying to break through to a mindset that senior pastors, I don't know where we get it from, a system that we were brought up in and adopted. And there's the pastor, and there, we know churches where they have the pastor's picture in every classroom so the kids will know who the pastor is. <laughs> Honestly, okay? You know, and he's got his name on the sign, and his picture's all over the website. And it's like, why don't you put the other staff on the website? Oh, I gotta, why is the pastor... What? Well, because, because, well, there's no good because. You're the chief servant. You got the most extraordinary leadership gift in your organization, maybe. That makes you the most extraordinarily responsible servant in the organization. You know, and I don't get this right every time, believe me. Believe me. Just ask the people who work here. But you know what? I'm committed to it. Because this is, Jesus said, you want to be a great leader? That's how you be a great leader. You spend your life saying, how, what can I do to help? 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 And you know what, leaders? If you say, what can I do to help? 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 Guess what your staff starts doing? What can I do to help? What can I do to help? What can I do to help? And all of a sudden, the silos, they just kind of go away. And all of a sudden, there's this, this you, I get to tap into your gifts, and you get to tap into mine, and your, and your leadership, and you, all of a sudden, there's just there's this thing. And it's not because you do away with point leadership, it's that you combine point leadership with mutual submission, and it is a powerful, powerful, powerful thing. 